What's that? Oh, hey guys, welcome to the program. Hey, what's up, trads? Hey, what's up, trads? Well, ladies and germs, it's time to continue our descent into online lunacy by taking a look at some of our favorite lunatics. Some of our favorite online goons. Uh, they go by the name of, I believe, they call themselves the Daily Weirdos. So because oh, of boy, the oh God. Okay, sorry. investigation of our friend Matt Walsh here at Daily... Wait, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. What do we, what do we got here? So, because of the investigation of our friend Matt Walsh here yeah. at Daily Wire, right, and and some of the people who work with him, mm -hmm. Tennessee Republican Governor Bill Lee has now called for an investigation of the pediatric transgender clinic at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Oh, this comes after shocking videos were posted by Matt Walsh detailing a doctor's promotion of the big moneymaker transgender surgeries. Wow. The videos also show apparent threats made against medical professionals at Vanderbilt University Medical Center if they objected to the procedures, even for religious reasons. So this is the new kind of interesting, what would we call it, like an activity or way to keep the, themselves busy over at the Daily Pervert, is their new thing seems to be to send their kind of confused viewers to harass hospital workers. I guess is the new thing now. Tucker Carlton's been doing this too, like putting actual, like the names of doctors who work at hospitals where I guess they do transgender surgeries. I can't quite figure out why they're doing this, but I do think maybe it is a way for them to sort of, um, to sort of contribute to the community, you know, which is that since they don't have real jobs, you know, Ben Chapino, Tucker Carlson, uh, Matt Welsh, all these guys never had real jobs, never even had a whiff of what it's like to have a real job. What they're doing, how they're contributing, and I think this is actually very beautiful, what they're doing to contribute to society is, hey, people who have already challenging jobs like hospital workers, we're going to make things a little harder for you by sending our fans to harass and bother you and send bomb threats to you just to kind of keep you on your toes. And I think that that's... That's, you know, I mean, we want our hospital workers to be on their toes. And it really is stunning material. Oh, wow. So, for example, Vanderbilt openly says they have individuals, they've worked on individuals who begin gender-affirming hormones at the age of 13. Oh. And this, it says this on their website. Wow. Well, previously recommended start at age 16, but uh -huh. consider starting as early as 14 years old. Oh, okay. By gender-affirming hormones, what we mean here is sex-altering hormones. Oh, wow. Or at least secondary sex characteristic-altering hormones. You know, what's really interesting and beautiful about this, like, uh, these kind of transgender videos and the dude, panicking about transgender people is how new it is. This whole thing is actually very innovative and new because, you know, you go back a handful of decades and it was like, oh, integration. You know, my kids, if my kids have to go to a school with black people, they're, they're going to get my kids. They're going to get my kids. And then it was gay people are going to get my kids. But this is different. This is different. But then in a lecture during Vanderbilt's LGBTQ Health Grand Rounds uh, lecture series, yeah. which uh, live streamed to Facebook but was viewed by almost nobody at the time, okay. Dr. Taylor was a bit more detailed in explaining the hospital's actual motivations wow. for expanding into quote-unquote transgender care. Oh, wow. In fact, she said that um, she personally helped to convinced the institution to make the move, based in part because uh, she claims it's the right thing to do, but also in large part because gender affirmation surgeries are, quote, big money makers. Whoa. She boasted that a phalloplasty, which is the construction of an artificial penis, Whoa. which, uh, Sorry. C.K. Louis. Cut from other parts of the body. She said that those could be worth $100,000 when you factor in all of the follow-ups oh. that are necessary. Wow. Listen. Okay. Starting in January 1st of 2017, according to the Affordable Care Act, insurance cover carriers are mandated to cover medical expenses. These surgeries make a lot of money. Uh, so female to male chest reconstruction can bring in $40,000. Uh, a patient just on routine hormone treatment, who I'm only seeing a few times a year, can bring in several thousand dollars because that requires a lot of visits and labs. It actually makes money for the hospital. This thing has gone kind of viral, and he was even on the Tucker Carlson, Tucker Carlstone show. Cutting the breasts off little girls? Whoa! Sterilizing 14-year-olds? Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, we're not the criminals here. And by Calm the way, down, I've got to believe that not everyone on the board at Vanderbilt Medical Center is a bad person. I've got to believe a lot of these people had no idea this was happening. 
So we got to kind of hand it to Matt Warch on this one because, like, this is actually pretty good propaganda. You get this video. I don't know where he dug up this video. It, he says it was a Facebook live stream, which these shadowy people, they want to hide this, so they Facebook live, live streamed it. Walsh on Wednesday posted a series of videos on Twitter he said were taken in 2018 and 2020, including one featuring Vanderbilt physician Dr. Shane blah, 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 calling gender transition surgery a, quote, big money maker. Some procedures, which are covered by the Affordable Care Act, could bring it up to 40 Gs. Wow. And others could cost 100 Gs. Wow. Here's an interesting little note. Taylor does not refer to children in the video clip Walsh posted. It's weird because he's connecting it to children the whole time. That's kind of uh, interesting. But, uh, but it is pretty good because it is kind of shocking. They're like, look at how much money we can make off of transgender surgeries. Okay. Uh, we did find a doctor who talks about how she convinced Nashville to get into the gender transition game to begin with. And okay. she says that, yeah, she told him it's the right thing to do. But also, in large part, uh, it's a big money maker, which were her exact words. And she gets, she goes into some of the details about how much money there is to be made from this. And wow. one of the So I guess I guess with the Daily Wire, who now I'm really pissed off at because they apparently they're the type of dirty communists. And many say not me, not me who believe that this profit, this disgusting profit motive should be taken out of the healthcare system. I disagree. I disagree. Because what's that guy's name? Adam Smith. Is it Adam Smith or Adam Levine? Levine? Which which is the guy who wrote the book about the, you know, the stuff. I guess what they're saying is like, look, life as a transgender person is probably hard enough already. You know, why would we make it even harder for them to have to pay you know, 100000 or whatever, $50,000, all this crap, jump through all these insurance hoops to uh, get the uh, get the medical attention they need. No, 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 that should be taken out of, out of the market. I get, that's what I'm reading what they're saying. And as a... As a Republican. I call myself, I am pretty pissed off right now. I don't know if you guys know this, I'm a Daily Wire subscriber, but back, back behind the scenes or whatever. They're going to be hearing from me. Let me, let, I'm just, <laughs> let me just leave it there. I'll just leave it there for now because you don't want to hear you don't want to hear the details. It's gonna get supported just by their phalloplasties, and that is like a fraction of the surgeries that they're doing. So much money to be made in carving the flesh off of a young girl's forearm Whoa! or the uh, she never said young girl, but that's okay. Go ahead. Interior of her thigh and forming a fake non-working penis. Whoa. <laughs> So much money to be made. But this is moral, according mm. to, again, our, our great elites. I mean, this is really shocking to have to hear these guys soil and sully the free market like this, you know? Today on the Matt Walsh Show. Whoa, show calm down, Matt. Okay, go ahead. Children's hospitals around the country are butchering, mutilating, and sterilizing their young patients. According oh, to wow. Boston Children's Hospital, literally every toddler, according to Boston Children's Hospital, Literally every toddler who has ever been born or will ever be born is trans. Whoa, is that true? Wow. What, 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 what? Wipe your ass with them. What, the kids? Wipe your ass with them. Jesus, Emma. Now, if it seems like they're casting the widest imaginable net in order to catch the most children they can. Right, like fish. <laughs> I get it. I get the metaphor, dude. Okay, go ahead. And put them all on a path to sterilization and butchery before they can even talk. Well, that's because that's exactly what these monsters are doing. Whoa. And they've done it up until this moment without much resistance right. from the public. Exactly. But that has to end. Yep. We have to stop making it so easy on them. Right. And that's why I'm in the very early stages of trying to organize a national coordinated effort right. to fight back against this evil. Right. And by organize, I mean with a blank face and with posting to social media. Right. Exactly. So this is in August of 2022, and he's saying this to the, let's be honest, who's watching this stuff seriously, kooks, you know, sorry, not their fault, but that's who watches this crap, kooks, lunatics, okay? So he goes on, oh, I'm, I'm like Bruce Willis and Die Hard, I'm a badass, this stops right here, right now, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put it into this. I'm, uh, by the way, I'm not leaving the studio. I'm not leaving my air-conditioned studio. But yeah, you, you guys, you go get arrested. So instantly, this uh, Boston Children's Hospital is like death threats, you know, all this, all this crap. All these lunatics are like, yes, 
all these lunatics took the bait, you know, and acted on it, and then they're harassing this hospital, making an already difficult job more difficult, which again, you know, this is the kind of thing you don't do when you've had a real job, but these guys haven't. That's okay. That's okay. Having Doing real work is not for everybody. You know, that's what I believe. And these guys, you know, they were just like, oh, that's not for me. You know, getting a real job. No, that's not. That's not. I'm, I'll make that harder. That's what I'll do. So then the hospital, this Boston uh, hospital that he kind of singles out in, in this video, um, gets a bomb threat. They get a bomb threat. And it, and it, it makes the hospital all f***ed up. TikTok and others had been, you know, accused of... Uh, maybe calling in the bomb threat ourselves, or at mm. least of encouraging others to do it, even though none of us ever encouraged anything like that. <laughs> and then the story goes away. That's great. A month earlier, a month before this video re was recorded, he's like, we're putting a stop to this right now. We have to stop making it so easy on them. To fight back against this evil. What these monsters are doing. Whoa. I'm starting a campaign to stop this. Look at what these sickos are doing. There's kids in cages. At this hospital, they're drinking out of one of those little, you know, with the ball. That's what he's putting in the minds of the, you know, less fortunate guys. Come on. People who watch the show. So, of course, they act on this information and they're like, from what I read, they called the hospital. The person who called in the bomb threat, bomb threat was like, you sickos. I'm putting a bomb in that hospital, you sickos. So that happens. And, and a month later, the guy who kind of got this ball rolling goes, uh, you know, he's like, I would never encourage anything like this. A month earlier, we're going to put a stop to this. Now he's like, um, legally, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 legally, I would never uh, encourage anything like this. <laughs> I mean, if there's any liability. Uh... Uh, maybe calling in the bomb threat ourselves, or at mm. least of encouraging others to do it, even though none of us ever encouraged anything like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't really get that. If what they're doing is so horrible at this hospital, why wouldn't you want anything that could make it stop? what these monsters are doing. Anything to stop it. We gotta go around the law on this one because we have to do what's just. But instantly he's like, I would never, um, I, uh, if I could get in trouble. Uh. And so my speculation, yeah, my theory of the case, oh, I wanna hear it, bro. is that um, this was not a conservative or a critic of gender ideology who called in a, th a threat to, to Boston children. Right, of course not. That wouldn't even make any sense. I mean, <laughs> that, no. someone who is actually a critic of yep. what Boston Children's is doing, yeah. a critic of gender ideology, you gain nothing. There is no motivation. There is no incentive to call in a bomb threat. Right. No incentive. Nope. Even aside from the fact that it's obviously a morally wrong, <laughs> atrocious thing to do. Yeah, that makes no sense. That makes no sense. A media figure targets a specific hospital Immediately after that, they get a bunch of death th death threats and all kind of threats. And then there's a bomb threat. <laughs> has nothing to do. And then after the bomb threat, he posted this guy, same guy, posted a Twitter. I would like to know what false alarm means exactly. Police are being coy about it. Plenty of reason to wonder whether false alarm really means leftist hoax. Whoa. So, man, I wonder who this suspect is that the FBI caught, you know, what, a, a week ago? Woman charged with threatening Boston Children's Hospital was a huge Trump fan. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Oh! The FBI arrested and charged a Massachusetts woman with allegedly calling in a hoax bomb threat to Boston Children's Hospital in August. We actually have a recording of that call right now from this Massachusetts woman to the Boston Hospital. Yeah, I'm going to come down there with a bam. I'm going to come down there in my car with a bam. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it'll be a car bam that I'll drive over there in my, you know. You get it. Catherine Levy, 37, was arrested Thursday at her home in Westfield, nearly two hours away from the hospital, from the hospital, and charged with willfully making a false bomb threat. On August 30th, Levy allegedly called the hospital and said, there is a bomb on the way to the hospital. You better evacuate everybody, you, you sickos. While not much is currently known about Levy, a woman with the same name in Westfield, Massachusetts, donated to former President Donald Trump's 2020 campaign and the Republican National Committee nearly 150 times over the course of the summer and fall of 2020. This was not a conservative or a critic of gender ideology who called in a, th a threat to, to Boston children. Right. Of course not. That wouldn't even make any sense. <laughs> Matt Welch really got crack journalist Matt Welch here. 
uh, really, really crack the case. More hard work from this guy. You know, I look at this guy and I'm like, oh, hospital workers, you know, people who are helping people in need who, you know, who need medical care. A guy who makes their job harder blank with a blank, dumb face staring into a camera. You know, he wanders into the Daily Wire studio, repeats the talking points and back to the car. He is the true hero. How is he not the true hero? That's what I don't understand as an American, you know. But uh, that's what makes this whole Vanderbilt thing, you know, the next hospital that they're targeting even more uh, disturbing. That they're like, hey, we, you know, got a bunch of people at this uh, hospital. We interrupted their jobs, interrupted their work. Then he got on his his camera and he's like, beep, 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 backing up. He's like, oh, if I could get in trouble for this. Then it turns out exactly what everybody suspected, that these social media perverts tricked uh, a, a troubled woman into doing this. And instead of saying, you know what, uh, mm, you know, maybe I'm a parasite on the world. Maybe I'm just a drag on society. And so instead of saying that, he's like, where's the next one? Where's the next one? And so here's where this uh, next one is, is leading to now. Republican lawmakers plan to strip Vanderbilt Hospital of child transgender surgeries. Governor Billy promises an investigation. Wow. Oh, there's a quote here in the article. It says what they can do with that investigation. Wipe your ass with them. Jeez. Wow. Fueled by a Twitter report, Republican lawmakers are... <laughs> That's the last thing you want to hear for, you know, people deciding uh, how life in the country has lived. Uh, some guys saw this on Twitter. Fueled by a Twitter report, Republican law lawmakers are planning to pass legislation in 2023 to stop Vanderbilt University Medical Center from performing pediatric transgender surgeries. That's America for you right there. We saw this on Facebook. We saw this on Facebook. But uh, I will say one thing I do agree with, you know, Ben Chitino and this guy on, is that this the profit motive should be taken out. That the profit motive should be taken out of this. You want a transgender surgery? It's free. Free. Paid for. Don't worry about it. Facebook. You know, I watch The Hill Rising, and they say that we should come together on what we do believe. And so I'm coming together with the Daily Wire on this one. I'll remember, this is, i remember, you know how they do those collaborations, the hype piece? You know, Supreme X Burger King. You know, Palace X, The Weather Channel, whatever, you know, these collaborations. This is R.M. Brown X, Daily Wire. We're coming together. Transgender people, they're all their surgery, all their health care, totally free. Totally free. And we're going to come together on this one. Me and Matt Watch. Me and Matt Watch. <laughs> this is pretty funny. So this is Tennessee where this whole Vanderbilt thing is taking place. Tennessee over the years has been on the front lines among Republican-dominated statehouses advancing anti-LGBTQ legislation. Last year, a Republican lawmaker, last year, Republican lawmakers and, a, and Governor Lee, the same guy, banned doctors from providing gender-confirming hormone treatment to prepubescent minors, even though advocates maintain that no doctor in Tennessee was doing so. <laughs> We're doing good work. We're spending our time wisely. That really is like a no-show job. Like a governor like that. This guy literally just like his job is he wanders around. He shakes somebody's hand. He like stares blank. For, you know, It's not just people who work for the UN. It's BlackRock's Larry Fink. So BlackRock, of course, is one of the biggest investment firms on planet Earth. They, they've run trillions of dollars in assets, which means they have extraordinary levels of control over corporations. Okay, moving on to a little bit of a separate topic here. This is something that I've been noticing. Like if I've been watching so much of this right wing nonsense for this channel that uh, I kind of notice like waves, like little patterns of stuff that they'll all talk about. And this is one that they've been really talking about a lot. They've been really hitting on, which is they've been talking a lot of uh, a lot about BlackRock, which if you don't know what BlackRock is, just look it up. You, it, it'll te you'll learn a lot about how the world works if you know kind of what's going on with BlackRock. It's a big investment company. And what they're all saying about this is they're like uh is the is they're really pissed off at this company not because they own everything not because they own a large this this investment company owns like a large chunk of a, every company or whatever 
They're not worried about that. What they're worried about is that this company is they're really pissed off that this the guy who runs this company is saying things about green energy. That's not a, that's literally that's it. According to people like Larry Fink, it all has to be organized under under Larry Fink. Uh -huh, so okay. if he can change the incentive structure by himself, using right. your money, by the way, because he doesn't own all the money at BlackRock. Okay. You just like how Larry Fink has invested your money, typically speaking. And now he's going to use the power of your pension fund in order to cram down his own values against your interest, by the way, as oh, both a consumer wow. and as an investor. Here's Larry Fink. I don't like that. Because of the rising energy prices, we are certainly seeing the green premium shrink quite considerably. And so the amount of investment dollars that are going into new decarbonization technology is accelerating. <laughs> okay, so he's saying that uh -huh. what we are seeing because of the, the driving up of the energy prices, because of the inflationary policy we've pursued, that's good because it's made all energy more expensive. And we've also okay. created disincentives for people to invest in making energy cheaper via oil and natural gas, through regulations and through ESG corporate governance. Right, by using the power of BlackRock to cram down these rules uh -huh. and regulations self-imposed uh, on the energy industry. We have, we've actually made energy more expensive, which means that by comparison, green energy has become cheaper. This is great because it's like multiple levels down of like weirdness and stupidity. The first thing, so that's the, the clip that he played is the guy who owns this BlackRock company that owns everything, you know? It's an investment company. I think... Probably most people think all they really care about is making as much money as possible, okay? And they're mostly doing lip service about green energy and all this stuff because it's, you know, it puts a nice veneer on the whole enterprise, you know what I mean? Hey, no, we're not just trying to, we're not just trying to do this. We're good. We're also good. But then Ben Shapiro comes in and says, oh, these people who all they care about is money, the problem is that they're not crazy enough. Because even even paying lip service to like the environment and all that is 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 wrong and bad. I mean, if I watch this goddamn Ben Shapiro crap seriously, I would be so confused. I would be very confused about how the world works, right? Because in the Ben Shapiro world, we love capitalism. Capitalism is perfect. You know, anybody who says anything bad about it, as we'll see in a second, oh, shut the fuck up, shut your mouth, you're an idiot. But then we don't like the profit motive for healthcare. And now the most capitalist crap ever, BlackRock, we don't we don't like that either. I just think capitalism is stupid and it doesn't work. I mean, obviously look at our country, it doesn't work. Okay, can we pause it there for one second? Uh-huh. My favorite is when people who are wearing things that they bought at a store that are much nicer than anything they could get in a communist country. Oh. Capitalism obviously doesn't work. She said while wearing a sweatshirt that she got at a store and sunglasses she got at a store and carrying a purse that she got at a store. Uh -huh. Yes, communism is obvious. It's, just look at our country. It doesn't work. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah, this all makes sense. This all kind of checks out. I, I don't like, I don't like that the assets of an economy are controlled by, you know, a very few amount of people. And, you know, in, in the case of BlackRock, uh, this one guy, I don't like that. I.e., I, I got a problem with capitalism. But if we don't have it, then you can't have a sweater. Like that, like, like, by the way, this beautiful, he's like, people, uh, people have, people could criticize capitalism, but they have beautiful sweaters like this. And the sweater is, it looks like something that you would wear when you like have diarrhea. He's like, how could you get something that beautiful any, well, any, anywhere else? Look how beautiful that sweater is. Wow. Is she going to a quinceanera in that sweater? Yeah, so I don't know. I would say, you know, to some of these guys, let's figure out what we believe. You know, let's do a little bit of this, you know. Let's do a little bit of this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Uh, let's do a little bit of that. Figure things out and then come back to YouTube. You know what I mean? Morons. Idiots. Maybe one of the things you will learn is... Generally speaking, Chinese people look Chinese. It's a generality. Okay, that's one thing we like to learn about. Generalities and specificalities. You know what I mean? Please, please. Well, guys, it's Monday, you know what I mean? Let's not let's not dwell on it. Let's not get too into it, you know? But we hate it, we're disgusted by it, and frankly, we want it to end. That's right, ban Mondays. They don't exist. They don't exist anymore. It's illegal, I think. Guys, hope you're having a good one, okay? And to all the younger viewers, based kickflip to you, okay?
Beast Kickflip. Thanks for thanks so much for watching, and as always, hey guys, you're only getting a fraction of the weekly shows. If you want a new mother episode every day, subscribe on Patreon for as little as two bones. You get the patron only Tuesday and Thursday shows, the Book Oblega show where we look at important books, and the goddamn weekly behind the scenes show. And for only 25 bones, you could become a producer and get your name up here. Look at these people. These people make this show possible. If it, wa if it wasn't for them, nothing. We don't have a show. We got nothing, and it's, go and it's garbage. garbage. And we have to just leave. We have to just basically walk away. And we don't even really know where we're walking. That's 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 the truly troubling part about all this. But please, become a patron today for as little as two bones or if you or five bones is another level or ten, or you go the full twenty-five and you get up here. Big special thanks to these people. Love you guys. Love you guys so much.